Welcome to Conamark High School East Campus. It's nice, not bad. Um, maybe you'll get a chance to check it out over your four years. Um, I'm Jason, the principal, Mr. Curtis, called a lot of other things um, as well. Um, but we're excited you're here tonight because you heard a lot about our values and what we stand for over the last couple months, right? And you have said, I want to be a raccoon. And you have made several selections in classes, and we're starting to work on those schedules right now. And before you know it, it's going to be August, and you're going to start that transition, and you're going to walk in here. And if you remember, we got 704 days, and day one really is so vital to your success because we can't waste a day. And what you're doing here tonight is taking another step and thinking about your raccoon journey, right? We talk all the time about being grounded, committed, and accountable. And when you think about AVID as a program tonight, you think about AVID as its purpose for helping you prepare for college, think about those three values that we share as raccoons. You know in somewhere inkling in you or in your student or what you want for your student that there's an idea of college and academic success and academic rigor to ensure that we're college ready, as we say, college career life ready, right? So that's good. That's what it means to be grounded. I have a general idea. You know, maybe you say I want to go to Madison. Maybe you say I want to go to Harvard. But you know the four-year college pathway is definitely on your radar. And that's awesome. And you probably took some classes related to that, right? Maybe you took accelerated English time. Maybe you took, you know, maybe you're in accelerated geometry or you're trying AP human geography already as a freshman. You kind of laid that out. What AVID is here to do is help you think a little bit more about becoming accountable to that goal. Right? You make commitments through your classes, but AVID's about accountability. How do we make sure you have the skill set to be successful in some of those classes? Right? So when you think about what you want to do, right, you can't get there on your own. This whole process is a journey. And we all have different journeys that we're on, and we all have different influences that make us go through that journey. Right? So maybe some of your parents are sitting here saying, like, I didn't go to college, so I don't know what it's like. Or maybe some parents are sitting there saying, you can't organize your notebook. How are you going to survive college? Right? Or Nature Hill or Silver Lake was a struggle. How are you going to get through high school and then on to college? Well, that's what AVID's about. It's about that increased accountability, support from mentors like the, the ladies here today, upperclassmen who have made that same commitment, and a culture and a community that says you will be college ready and you will be successful to not only get into college, but also attain your goals while you're there. There, so that you get in there your first day of college and you know how to take notes. You know how to organize your binder, right? And you go through the process together and you figure it out. So this is super exciting when you think about taking those first steps, right? Maybe you walk out of here tonight and you're like, this is it. Maybe you walk out of here tonight and you're like, I got some more questions. That's why we're here. Maybe you walk out of here tonight and say, this isn't for you. And maybe there's something else that's kind of fitting where you're at in this whole journey. And that's what our counseling team's here to do for you there. So I'll turn it over to Jamie our director, and she'll talk with you guys and welcome everybody watching online and we will uh, work through this together. You'll hear from some great kids and we'll talk to you after. Thank you. Hi. Um, this is really exciting, as Jason just said, because first of all, we don't have to wear masks this year in, um, and try to talk through those for an hour. That was difficult last year. But more importantly, as our second time doing this, we were only in our second year at OHS in implementation of AVID. Um, our senior class this year had a 100% acceptance rate into college. So do I believe that those kids are going to be that much more prepared? Absolutely. And that is what, to, to mimic everything Jason was just saying, that's what it's all about, is getting you to not just in, so that acceptance rate, but really giving you the skills to make it through um, the rigor that's going to happen when you hit college. More exciting to me is that this year, instead of kids and families listening to what I had to say, these guys all volunteered to come and talk about the program because they're passionate about it or they feel already the, the difference it's making in their, in their years. So we have a, oh, sorry. We have a variety of levels, you know, um, represented. Uh, unfortunately, because of our rescheduling of the event, some of the kids that originally were speaking from the freshman class couldn't make it again with the reschedule. But we still have a great turnout for um, representing the program from a kid's perspective and a lens, because we do know that that's what's most important for kids that are here, is to listen to what our students are saying about the program. So um, Jason introduced me. I'll let our other teachers introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Angie Laurier. I teach the AVID Elective 10. Hello, I'm Adria Braley Yagi, and I teach the AVID Elective 9. I guess I should have said that I teach the 11s and 12s too, but you know, I'm getting those jitters out. Um, so we're going to start with Peyton. 
You want to come on up or sit there? Yeah. Either way. There you go. Take her show. I think she should stand too. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Peyton and I am an AVID 11. AVID builds the necessary skills for students to help prepare them throughout college. But it's not just a college prep program. It supports students through decision making, especially for the future. Um, for example, in the fall, AVID had given me the opportunity to tour UW-Whitewater, which had allowed me to make the decision on where I want to go based on my career choice. Hi, my name is Michaela Trioni. I'm a part of AVID 11, and AVID has helped me a lot with my organizational skills, as well as my public speaking and collaboration, and focused note-taking in my AP courses, and preparing me for the ACT. And then, who is an AVID student? Okay, we have a lot of different personalities in our AVID program. <laughs> They're AVID 9 and 12, it's very different. But I have Olivia here. So what makes a good AVID student? Um, here, should I take this? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> An AVID student is someone who is willing to put in the work for themselves. It's not someone who's being forced to be put through AVID, but it's someone who wants to help themselves be prepared for the future. Okay. I'm going to add to that side real quick. Okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. I just want to talk to a few more of these things because we did make some changes this year to make this program more accessible for all students. So originally, and, and if you look at the AVID website, the GPA that they're looking for is that middle student, that 2.5 to 3.5. We realized that this is really best practice for all kids and what every student really could use and benefit from. And so we made the changes here to include the 4.0. So again, when you start thinking about, is this right for me? And you're like, well, I'm getting all A's. The difference between what middle school or intermediate um, grading systems are like is often a, there is that big jump from the intermediate or middle school to the high school. That's where and why we um, changed that to include all students from that 2.5 to a 4.0. Because even at a 4.0 student at the middle school may come to high school and still struggle with some of that organization or some of those other factors. Um, and the rest of the things on here too, like it says a two or a four year college, Let's say you're sitting there right now and you're like, well, I might choose military. We do explore the military options as well. So it, it doesn't cut out any pathway that your um, son or daughter might choose. It is open to all of the options in terms of the pathways that uh, OHS represents. I'd also like to add, if you have questions as we go, please just make it uh, feel more conversational in that and, and ask the questions as kids are talking or I, I jump in because it'll make it easier and, um, than it just saving them all for the end, if that's okay. And we'll just walk over to you, Vanna style. No, that really ages me, doesn't it, Vanna? <laughs> yep. All right, who's the, who's the, who's the, who's the, all right, so we thought instead of just reading off the slide, we'd ask the people, other people who are here, why they think AVID is right for them. So, Evan, why would AVID be right for you? Um, like Mrs. Uh, Regan said, even though like I, get, I was always the one that always got good grades, but um, AVID was always really good for me because I struggled with the organization and just being on schedule, so that's where I found it very helpful. All right, Olivia, why is it right for you? Um, I find the note-taking to be very helpful. It the notes themselves are more organized, and the organization aspects of AVID all around are just very helpful with my student career. All right, perfect. <laughs> um, I would say AVID is right for me because it allowed me to make that extra step in my future college choice. And AVID is not. I know in eighth grade, a lot of my friends who were in the application process, they all thought it's just going to be a study hall and they're going to be sitting in that classroom doing more busy work. It is not. You get to go. This year we got to go to college tours, I think three or four? Three. three. And we also got into military course, which is really fun, teamwork building. And then it's also helping a lot with all that organization, like I said earlier, and getting you ready for college courses because it's not going to be like your middle school or high school, 
which is very, teachers help you, you're going to be out to doing things on your own. All right, so this was one of our freshmen that she's in AVID 9. Her name is Bella. She was not able to make it tonight. So today uh, they created a video of her saying her thoughts on the slide. Hi, my name is Bella and I'm in AVID 9. I'm so sorry I couldn't be with you all today, but I still wanted to get my point across and say why you should take AVID. I could sit here and talk about all the great things that AVID brings to us, or I can just cut to the chase and say and tell you, what I think is most important, and that's if you want it. Not if your parents, teachers, or peers think that you should join because it will benefit you, but if you want it. I always say this, what you put into AVID is what you're going to get out of it. So please, if you want it, please apply for this pro program. But if not, this program is not right for you, and that's okay. What's up? I'm Eric. I'm Spencer. And we're both avid seniors at Oconomowoc High School. I'd like to talk to you about um, college. So first of all, I'm going to UW Milwaukee, and if it wasn't for avid, I would not be going there. I think that having three years of being an avid has been huge help, just keeping me accountable on like all my homework and like schoolwork and just my grades and everything. And yeah, and with that, like getting into college, you have to do the ACT, and so. AVID has been a great way to prep for that and improve on your scores. You know, AVID has impacted me hugely. Um, even though I have only been in it for a year, it's helped me get into New Mexico State. It helped me stay organized and stay accountable with our binder checks. Uh, it helps me stay organized with different binders to keep everything in. Uh, and it's scholarships. Uh, we're in the middle of doing our scholarships. Uh, we're doing 12 scholarships this semester. Um, and that could seem a lot like a lot to some students, but in the grand scheme of things, um, it will really, it's not really that big. Yeah, just to conclude, I think um, for you eighth graders that are thinking about applying for AVID, I highly recommend it. It will pay off in the end. What's up? I'm Eric. I'm Spencer. Spencer Hi, had a little Bella, trouble in that video at the end. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, I'm talking. All right. Hi, my name is Olivia Utech. I'm in AVID 10. And writing is one of the key aspects that we focus on in AVID. So one of the ways that we focus on writing is through note taking. And um, Freshman year, you learn how to take Cornell style notes, and they'll talk to you more about those later. But this kind of note has a specific area for you to map out all of your thoughts and ideas, and it also has a section for you to summarize your thoughts. So it's really good to just have areas to map out your thoughts. Um, another way that we use writing in AVID is through quick writes. Um, an example of one is on the board. But we do these once a week in our weekly reflections, which is when you just go through and um, reflect on your grades. And for your quick writes, you're given a prompt once a week to elaborate on for five minutes. And this helps with on-demand writing skills, which comes in handy when you're in your English classes and you're given these on-demands. Um, these quick writes, you're given in a prompt and then right then you write on it for five minutes. And these prompts are a lot more fun to write on than on demands though because they're like more personalized and just fun. Um, another way that we use writing in AVID is through college skills or like getting into college. So I'm going to ask Lisa here, one of our seniors, about how um, your writing skills in AVID has helped you prepare for and get into college. Um, I would say that AVID has helped us with writing college college and scholarship essays by giving us um, work time to write them. And it allows us to receive extra support, um, especially from Mrs. Regan when it came to the revising and editing portion. All right. This is another video. 
Um, this was another one of our AVID 9 students. Her name is Erin, and she was also not able to make it with us tonight. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm a part of AVID 9, and I'm here to talk to you about inquiry. Inquiry is about us learning to ask the right high-level questions. The more we use these questions, the more success we see in improving our content knowledge. By asking these high-level questions, we are forced to look at a topic from a different perspective which helps us all to learn and grow. Personally, I see inquiry the most in AVID during our tutorial process. By coming to tutorials ready to ask these high level questions, everyone is forced to use their previous knowledge and their current knowledge that is growing to help the person on their point of confusion, which truly helps us all to walk away feeling as though we have accomplished something. Uh, my name is Barb Simpson. I'm a supervisory para here at the high school, um, but I get to spend my Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays in the AVID department where my official title is an AVID tutor. And in AVID tutoring is not a one-on-one -on -one like you would kind of conjure up sitting at a desk, you know, um, looking at individual problems with one individual student. Um, Aaron mentioned it and some of the other students mentioned our tutorial process. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays across all the grade levels, we get together in a small group and we have this, this session, which is more like you would imagine um, you would see a study group in college. So what we're challenging the students to do is to take their core work really dig into their homework, check, make sure they're looking at their grades, make sure they're looking at um, what's coming up the next week. So we're teaching them some back planning skills, which are just absolutely necessary during college. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Evan, who's going to talk a little bit more about the process. Hi, my name is Evan Caulfield, and I'm a AVID 10 student. Um, I find, or just, I'm just going to talk about how tutorials have helped me as a student. Um, are any of you guys planning on being student athletes here? Yeah, so, um, I find AVID is to be helpful. Like, you're not always given the, um, same work time, I guess, and study time as other students. And so you might be falling behind a little bit or you're not understanding something. And that's where you're able to bring tutorials in and you can, um, just get help on what you need and present your question to your students or to your like other peers. Um, yeah. I just want to kind of bring back, so you've seen some of the core base of what AVID is, and we call that our wicker strategies. So that's writing, inquiry, collaboration, organization is going to be the next one, and reading. I just want to kind of jump and quickly talk to you about the curriculum, because you may kind of be wondering, you know, when this takes place. So the AVID elective takes place, it's a year-long skinny at all levels. Um, and we'll talk about scheduling in, in a minute, but I just wanted to kind of set that tone for you as well. Um, so in every level, we work on these wicker strategies around writing, inquiry. It's just different, and it's tailored more to the needs of the students at that particular year. We do tend to focus on literacy throughout all of the four years in the program, but I would say that right now especially and like what these kids have gone through is the primary focus for the first and second years has been more on writing and reading um, to build the skills by junior year there's a little gradual release there and kids have a little bit more ownership over the things that and the direction that we go in the class and by that i mean um you know when we do some college decision making i mean that's what our 11s have really kind of focused in on this year and then act prep so we've really gone through like a little bit of everything. We've done some philosophical chairs where there's reading and there's writing, so it's incorporated. But I have to say by junior year, we're starting to make those college decisions. And I think that's the primary focus by junior year. And then senior year, that hand-holding through, how do we get there now? Now we, we've made some decisions junior year, we at least have explored that. And how do we do that, make that happen by senior year? And so the, the curriculum kind of shifts, I would say, with the needs of the students. Um, but every year they are getting all of those core wicker, as the, the acronym stands for those pieces, writing, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and reading. Anything you want to add about that? I didn't think so. <laughs> all right. Who's next? Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm Lisa, and I'm a part of the AVID 12, 
And I would say that study groups are very beneficial, especially in senior year, because they allow you to come in with a question to ask. And this question could be from any classes you have, which seniors mainly are in the same curriculum. So it allows um, each of us to help each other with our point of confusion. And study groups are helping us prepare for college because it is allowing us to build communication skills with each other and allowing each and every one of us to think creatively. Okay. So organization is probably one of the most helpful aspects that I find in AVID. So one of the main parts of organization in AVID are these AVID binders, which I have mine here for you. But so this is a big hefty binder, but um, you want to hold it for me? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thank you. But so all AVID students are required to use an AVID binder. Um, they're sectioned off by tab of your classes. So that way you can um, hole punch and place all of your handouts in the correct tab. And it makes it so easy to find all of your handouts and everything in one spot. And it's so much harder to lose things when you know automatically where you're supposed to put it. So it's also really helpful when you're taking notes that you put them in the right spots. And um, that's helpful for studying and everything too. But um, I have my tabs in chronological order that goes throughout the day. That just makes so much more sense in my head. But you can put them however you want to as long as you have one for each of your classes. Um, yeah. I feel like there was something else that I was going to say, but maybe not. Oh. Um, so in Nature Hill, I know that I was so used to having my folder and notebook organization. And it might be kind of a difficult change for some of you, but I know that once I got started using my binder, it's been hard to stop because it's so much easier, even though it's kind of big and heavy to carry around in your backpack, but it's so easy to not have to deal with the struggle of, oh no, I left my math notebook at home because it's all right here in your binder and you don't need to worry about that as long as you have your binder with you in school. Next, Peyton's going to talk to you about your planners. All right. So, oh, sure. <laughs> All right, so another thing we have in AVID is our planners. You can have it day to day, week to week. You can have the little month one with the boxes. I have this day to day one that I keep. I just like flip through it. It lists my classes. I usually put assignments, due dates, things we did that day in case I need to go back if I miss the day. Um, I keep my work schedule, I keep any appointments I have, things I do on the weekend. This is just my updated one, like no school. Helps me stay organized, helps me have something in front of me. And it doesn't have to be a small planner like this. It can be on Google Calendar, something to keep you organized, something you can have in front of you that you can look at to keep your days organized. Are we starting with the video or me? Video. Did you know that the brain is designed to forget things? Which makes learning new information really hard. The focused note-taking process makes learning stick. A landmark study done in the 1880s found that people forget along a predictable curve. In an hour, you will forget more than half of what you've learned. A day later, you will only remember a third. And it just keeps getting worse from there. The focused note-taking process is designed to help you remember what you learned. The secret is repetition. Interacting with your notes within 18 minutes will boost your recall from 55% to 100%. Revisiting your notes within one day increases your learning from 70% back to 100%. Notice the curve of forgetting changes dramatically after every interaction with your notes. Complete five repetitions, and the information is all but cemented in your brain.
All right. So that was just a little video about taking notes. Um, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so a big part in AVID is uh, taking notes, keeping them organized. Um, something we do is taking Cornell notes, like someone had talked about earlier. And um, every week or whenever we have our binder checks, they always check for taking notes, making sure we are um, taking the knowledge we learn from classes and processing it, connecting the thinking, sum even summarizing it. So like I just took a few examples from what I had in my binder. Not everyone needs to make them colorful, but that's just how my mind works. So these were just a few of mine that I had. Um, there were quick ones that go like this, even highlighting, going through, underlining them. That is the processing. That's going through them. It's taking the notes, going back, going through them, highlighting what you need to know. These can be for tests, for quizzes, for any units that you go throughout class. So it's really just examples I could go up and show. So like a big... <laughs> A big class I have is AP Environmental. You take a lot of notes in that class. It's mostly the AP courses you have to take notes for. So a few examples, one from AP Environmental. Things colored, important, just quick things that I could go back, process through, and memorize, just to have. In terms of the note taking, you may, how many of you have heard of Cornell style? Oh, excellent. Okay. So, and, and some teachers probably at the intermediates um, do use Cornell style. Um, there are other versions. So we teach kids in the, at the freshman level the Cornell style as well as other formats in, in terms of that um, idea. The concept is still the same, that they are summarizing their learning, because that's actually where the learning is happening. Instead of just that regurg regurgitation of facts, they have to put it in their own words and really think about connections to their own lives or connections to something they've read or done previously. Again, that's where we see their, their most boost in terms of performance on tests and quizzes and even homework assignments because of that summary. But it is a, it's a explicitly taught skill, and I can honestly say I haven't seen another class at OHS that explicitly teaches note-taking. AVID is really the primary, um, the, the base for that, that skill, um, and I'm, I'm pretty proud to say that we, we own it, and I think we own it really well. Evan has to step out. He has a co prior commitment, so thank you very much, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Um, I can make a point about this. Um, so reading actually takes a huge part, especially in the ACT. Um, I know a lot of our scores drop because of our reading score in the ACT, so it's really critical to think about that and practice. That's why we take a lot of practice ACT um, tests throughout AVID in our classes. Again, this is that part of that wicker, so the writing and the reading part of what we teach. So in terms of one of the skills that I've kind of po posted up here uh, as an example is teaching students how to mark the text. So in English classes, they often learn to annotate, right? So looking for figurative language or literary devices, that's a pretty common annotation. Marking the text or writing in margins is a different type of skill. It's off that premises, but it is, or premise, but it is, um, it's different in that, like when, as, as Peyton was saying, preparing for the ACT reading portion, marking the text becomes critical because of staying engaged in the reading. And so as reading gets harder, more boring, as it's going to when, they, when students get to college, they have to have some skills in their back pocket to be able to deal with the, the boring reading that's going to happen. Um, not everything is going to be exciting, right? 
<laughs> right. So um, we teach students to critically read, and that critical reading piece is all around vocabulary and how do we build up the skills to improve comprehension as well. So it's not just marking the text or taking additional notes and the ways around that. It's also building the comprehension and other skills that they need around reading to read at higher levels. So we want to see students that are entering college and not having to take remedial level English classes simply because they, they can't keep up with the reading and the, the rigor that's going to come with college level reading. So um, that's kind of why and how we incorporate the reading at, again, different levels and different, um, at the different levels they learn different skills that are more valuable perhaps to what their, their core curriculum or core content classes would reference. So the reading is specialized to what they're going to do um, for that level. Make sense? Yeah, I, I mean, I can speak to, yeah. The, the, so what you see up here, kids often ask, how is this going to fit or is this going to ruin something or take something away? I think over here, has, has it really ruined anything for you or taken, right? You're, in, you're both in choir. Um, we have other, a, a lot of other students that are in band. So it's never that you have to give up something to take AVID. It is a skinny, and oftentimes, and, and Susan, um, one of our counselors, will come and speak to that, oftentimes it matches up quite nicely against a foreign language or um, sometimes with, uh, well, as you see here, like, um, well, they have it as an, a world language, but as the kids get older and they have more choices, it often becomes even easier for them to find a skinny that matches that is either a year long. Um, a lot of classes in our social studies department as well are um, year-long skinnies or semester skinnies, so it matches pretty easily, but that is often a concern. Susan, do you want to... Good evening. I'm Susan Verhagen. I'm one of the counselors um, at the high school. So with scheduling, it's always fun to do all the puzzle making we do um, from April till about August. Um, so when we're working through schedules with students with AVID, we will look for our best way to match the requests and include AVID. And the good thing is, if you look at the schedule, like drawing and weight training, those classes are offered as term blocks, but they're also offered as um, the semester skinnies. So there are options even for freshmen um, that they can do the skinny instead of the block because the skinny is what we need to match up with AVID. Um, so world language, those intro world languages match up. Um, Principles of Biomedical Sciences is really a popular one that matches up. Um, so there's various ones that we will try to match up um, for a student. If we're working with a student that their schedule is not matching up and we're having a hard time um, matching up their requests, your student's counselor would reach out to the student and to you over the summer and say, hey, this isn't working, like here's some options. So there's always options and it is, you know, we typically have worked out things well with you guys and your schedules because sometimes there are like conflicts. So we're always willing to work just because your requests are put in. If there's a class that matches and there's a room, we'll fit that in too. So we do a lot of figuring things out, um, even you know throughout the summer too. So know that if there's an issue and we can't fit something in, um, we'll reach out and say, hey, how, how about this instead? And we'll work our best to get all your requests in as, as best we can and include that AVID, because AVID is such a worthwhile thing. Um, speaking from a counselor perspective, we, a couple of years ago, went to Madison, um, UW-Madison, talked to their admissions and said, you know, we're starting with AVID, like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, and they said, when they see AVID on a transcript, to them that says, wow, the student has come prepared. They have the skills to be successful, not only to get into UW-Madison, but also to stay in at Madison. So um, Madison, obviously, is one of our most rigorous state schools. And to hear them say that, that it really prepares them, and they see students coming out of AVID be really successful there, um, I think that's a real positive and a, and a tribute to the skills that these guys have learned, too. So know that as counselors, whether it's AVID, whether it's scheduling, reach out to us, because we're here to help with you guys starting even before you walk in the doors as a ninth grader, um, but throughout your four years. So if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. We're happy to help, too. So does that cover everything? Okay. Any questions about that with scheduling? Okay. Great. Thanks. Did you guys have that one any to add anything? Okay. Good. So these dates I just realized were um, 
they are not correct because of our March 1st was our original due date. Um, we have extended that to March 8th based on the rescheduling of this event. So I apologize, but student applications will be due on March 8th. And then we still will hold the interviews. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's right, so don't you worry about what I did. Um, so March 14th to the 17th will actually be on site. Um, if you are a parochial or an open enroll student, um, I would reach out specifically to you and set something up for that Friday. Um, there's always time for us to make those interviews happen if a spring break happens or something else uh, you know, that you won't be the, present, that's fine. But those are our, our set for our interviews where we sit down and personally kind of ask about your de determination to be in the program. Um, we'll have about anywhere from 30 to 40 spots available is kind of what we're looking for. And um, usually we fill those. If we have a, an overabundance, it would be that we would have a waiting list and or um, we will extend sections if need be as, as we see fit. So know that this isn't necessarily something that we're only letting a, a hard and fast number in. We want to see kids apply and, and the benefit of all of these skills happen for each and every one that wants it. Any questions that we may not have touched on? Do you have a question? Darn it. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to add, I know we've thrown like so much information at you all, um, but I just, I teach the AVID Nines and I just wanted to add that um, if you're sort of on the fence about whether or not this program might be a fit for you, what I would just add is that we really think of AVID as a program that works at removing barriers to academic success both in high school and beyond. So um, like all these students mentioned with all of our wigger, wigger strategies and the things that we do on a daily basis in class, um, so every student finds a different benefit that's like most um, needed for them. So for some students, it's organization, and that's something that they really struggle with. So they find the most value in the binder checks that we do and the planners they have to keep. Um, for other students, it's finding a community and mentorships with our upperclassmen who are here. Um, and I think just the fact that they're here um, donating like an hour plus of their time on a Tuesday night um, just says a lot for the kind of community that we have in our AVID program. Um, so. Basically, I just wanted to say that it's it's something that we see as a program that removes barriers for students to be successful in high school and beyond. And I think no matter what pathway a student chooses after their time in high school, um, those strategies that we have, the writing, reading, um, inquiry, collaboration, and organization are beneficial to students no matter what. So um, I just wanted to add that in as we close here. And my last thing would be that if you wanted to have a, a personal meeting, I will um, send out an, a, a letter tomorrow uh, with a sign up genius where I'm willing to sit down with any families, including those that are watching at home, if you want to um, sign up for a, like a sit down to just talk about whether or not this is right for uh, your student, then let's, let's do that. I would rather talk through it with you if you still want to make a really solid choice. Because we want you to make the commitment to the four years versus, you know, trying it and then thinking like, hmm, it wasn't for me. We'd rather see you make sure that you're making the right decision. So if you don't have any other uh, questions, thank you very much for coming and thank you for watching for those of you at home. Um, Thank you very much for giving your time and running this presentation beautifully. Don't you think? They, they did a fantastic job, I thought. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, we'll be around. <laughs>